Hello, and welcome to episode 2 of Sir Astro's Star Wars Legion painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint the Rebel Troopers from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Legion. There are two squads of seven troopers in the base game, and in this video I will be exploring a different colour scheme for each squad. A forest camo design inspired by the Rebel outfits we see in the Endor scenes of episode 6, and a more bluish urban camo scheme. Using camouflage patterns is not only fun to do, but is arguably easier than highlighting plain areas of clothing. Far from being a strict guide, my aim in this video is to share a range of ideas to hopefully inspire you to adapt or create colour schemes of your own, which is not only creatively fulfilling, but will also help to give your army a unique look. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I've chosen to prime the figures in black, followed with a spray of white from above, which will help to bring out the details and make the base colours easier to apply. We'll then apply our base colours, followed with some shades to bring some depth to the shadows and sharpen the definition. We can then add some optional highlights to boost the contrast further, and some finishing touches, which will include some weathering and some texture for the base. Let's begin. Most of the troopers come in two pieces, and they're all very simple to assemble. A small dab of superglue is all that's needed to secure the parts, which interlock together so there's little chance of gluing something on incorrectly. Any of the arm pieces like this one that look like they might obscure the body and make things difficult for us whilst painting can simply be dry fitted for the purposes of priming. We can then paint them separately and glue them on later, just as we did for Luke in the previous episode. You could also glue the figures to the bases, or use some poster putty for the time being if you'd rather attach them later on at the basing stage. We're now ready to do some priming, and I've chosen to prime the troopers in black, followed with a spray of white from above, a bit like we did with Luke in the previous episode. For the black prime, I'm using an airbrush and Vallejo's black surface primer, but this could also be done with a spray can primer. Once the primer is fully dry, I'm now going to spray the trooper with some pure white from above, firstly with a spray can primer just to show that this can be done with or without an airbrush. This is often called zenithal priming, as it creates a pattern of light and shade that mimics the kind of light we'd expect the sun to produce when it's directly above or at its zenith. A couple of light passes sweeping across the miniature should do the trick. There are several benefits to priming on miniatures in this way. For one thing, the naturally dark recesses and brighter upturned areas will make it much easier to achieve a strong sense of contrast with our base colours than if we had primed in just black or white. This kind of priming also gives us the option of using deliberately thin base tones, allowing the zenithal highlights to show through, creating some quick and easy shadows and highlights. It's certainly not essential, but if you do own an airbrush and want an even smoother gradation from the black to the white, you could introduce an intermediate grey tone, as I'm doing here, with some of Vallejo's cold grey. I'm applying this from a slightly lower angle of roughly 45 degrees. This can then be followed with some pure white sprayed directly from above. With the troopers primed and ready, we can now apply the base colours. Before we begin painting, I'm going to mount the figures to some spare paint pots with some white stack or poster putty. I'm then going to begin by painting the skin, and for all of the light-skinned troopers, I'm using Bugman's Glow. As usual, I'm thinning the paint with a few drops of water, and I'm using a size 2 brush by Rosemary & Co. For the dark-skinned troopers, I'm using Vallejo's USA Olive Drab. You don't have to use the exact same colours, of course, and using an approximate alternative, such as Rhinoxide, would be fine. For the Duros, I'm going to use a two-tone approach by using some purple, the fang, for the shadows, which I'm going to then loosely blend into some Nurgling Green for the rest of the face. 
Because I'm going to blend the colours whilst they're still wet, I'm adding a couple of drops of Vallejo's glaze medium, which slows the drying time, giving us longer to work with the paint on the miniature. I'm starting with the purple, which I'm using to sketch in the shadows, which basically means most of the lower half of the head. I'm now painting the upper half with the Nurgling Green. After giving the brush a quick rinse, we can brush over the border of the two colours to create a rough transition. This two-tone approach is of course entirely optional, and you could use a single blue or green colour of your choosing instead. Once dry, we can go back in with some additional Nurgling Green to sharpen some of the facial details. Although we'll be doing some further refining here later on, so I don't mind if things look a bit rough at this stage. Next I'm going to paint the facial hair, mostly using grey and white. Here I'm starting with some pure Mechanicus Standard Grey. Whilst that's still wet, I'm now adding some highlights in white, which we can blend into the grey. And I'm now painting the lower lip. You could of course use a range of colours for the hair. Here, for example, I'm mixing some Steel Legion Drab into the grey to create a more brownish tone. And I'm once again mixing in a little white for the central highlight. I'm now moving on to the clothes, starting with the green coloured scheme. For any troops with a visible undershirt, I'm using Vallejo's Deck Tan. I'm also using this for the top and peak of the helmet. For the harder outer ring, I'm using Vallejo's German uniform. I'm now painting all of the areas of metal using a roughly equal mix of lead belcher and German grey. I'm using this for all of the weapons as well as the captain's electro binoculars, the metal sides of the helmet, as well as any belt buckles and metallic detailing on the backpack. A single layer of this should be okay, and I don't mind if some of the raised highlights show through. For the bandoliers, I'm using Steel Legion Drab, although a dark green would also work well here. I'm also using this for the belt, as well as any other straps and pouches. A 
Additionally, I'm using this for the inner padding on the helmet. Next I'm going to mix roughly equal amounts of storm vermin fur and black. This produces quite a dark brownish grey colour, which I'm thinning a little more than usual to decrease the opacity. Here you can see the kind of consistency that I'm looking for. I'm then using this to paint the boots and gaiters. Because of the thin consistency, this behaves a bit like a wash, collecting more in the recesses, and the translucency allows the zenithal highlights we added earlier to clearly show through. This will save us having to add any highlights of our own later on. I'm also using this for some of the backpacks. And I've chosen to use it for the knee pads. Next I'm painting the gloves with some Ogren camo. For the captain's goggles I'm using German grey. And to add a splash of colour, I've chosen Jocayero Orange for the lens. Before adding the camo design, you may wish to paint one or two jackets with something plain like cold grey just to break the uniformity, or perhaps to make this heavy gunner stand out from the squad. I'm now going to paint all of the remaining clothes and backpacks with death card green, although most pale shades of green or tan would be fine for this. These are the areas I'll be applying some camouflage patterns to in a while. Notice I'm leaving the underside of the coat as it is. Apart from the camo design, this completes the base colours for the forest themed troopers. Before moving any further, here's a brief rundown of the colours I chose for the alternative urban camo scheme. For the undershirts, I'm using Vallejo's blue-grey pale, although any pale grey colour would be fine. For the gloves, belts and pouches, I've chosen Rhinox Hide. This can be applied quite thinly to allow the zenithal highlights to show through. For the soft parts of the helmets, I'm using Vallejo's cold grey. And for the hard rim, I'm using silver grey, although most off-whites would be fine. I've also chosen German grey for a couple of the jackets and straps to break things up a bit. Finally, for the areas I want to be camouflaged, I'm using Fenrisian grey. Before progressing with the camouflage, I'm going to jump ahead for a moment to shade and highlight the faces, because for some of the troopers, once we attach the arms, they're going to be a lot harder to get to. So I'm now going to shade all of the humans with some Reichland flesh shade.
For the Duros, I'm thinning some Drukii Violet with an equal amount of Lamian Medium, and I'm shading the face selectively, focusing on the facial details and creases. We can then highlight the pale skin, and I'm using the same tones we used for Luke in episode 1. I'm beginning with some Bugman's Glow, which I'm lightening with some Cadian Flesh Tone. And I'm now using pure Cadian Flesh Tone. For larger areas of skin, we can direct the pigments up to the brightest point with our brush. We can then introduce some Kisler flesh for the brighter highlights. And I'm now using pure Kisler flesh just for places like the tip of the nose and the cheekbones. We can even mix in a little white to create a few final extreme highlights. For the dark skin tones, I'm going to create an equal mix of Gorthor Brown and Towerlite Okra, and use this to lighten the original base tone of USA Olive Drab in a few stages. Here's my Gorthor Brown and Towerlite Okra mix, which I'm now using to lighten the USA Olive Drab. I'm now using the pure Gorthor Brown and Towelite Okra mix. And we can once again add a little white for the final brightest highlights. Finally, for the Duros, I'm adding some Ogren Camo to the Nurgling Green to provide a gentle boost to the highlights. And I'm now using pure Ogren Camo. We can also go ahead and paint the eyes, and I'm using Mephiston Red for this. For the human troopers, it isn't necessary to paint the eyes at all, as they'll be mostly obscured during play. If you wish to give it a go, you could dab a little off-white, like ivory, just to pick out the whites of the eyes. and be prepared to make some corrections with the base skin tone if necessary. Alternatively, you could paint the whole eye white and then pick out the pupil with something like German Grey. Once the faces are complete, I'm going to glue on the remaining arms.
and I'm going to fill any visible joins with a little matte varnish, just as we did for Luke in the previous episode. We can then touch the joins up with the base colours we used earlier. We're now ready to add our camouflage patterns. There are many types of pattern and colour combinations you could use to do this, and trying out different ideas can be a lot of fun. For my forest camo, I'm going to use the following four colours on top of my base tone, and I'm going to create quite a diffuse pattern inspired by the outfits seen in episode 6. I'm going to begin by marking out some patches using the Caliban green. But before I do, I'm going to take some water and spread it over the area I'm going to work on. I'm then applying my patches of colour and allowing the wet surface to encourage the paint to spread a little, creating a less deliberate and more diffuse effect. I'm not even too worried if the paint runs into the recesses like you can see here. Notice that I'm leaving a fair bit of space for me to add my additional colours to in a moment. Once that's dry, I'm going to repeat the process, this time with Elysian Green. So I'm once again applying a thin layer of water. And I'm now hitting the main areas in between the patches of darker green, although it's also fine for the colours to overlap. Next I'm adding some smaller spots of USA Olive Drab. And finally, I'm using some deck tan to add a few small bright patches. More than just being a random part of the design, these can also be placed where we might expect more of a highlight, such as on the edges of the backpack, the shoulders and the knees. We can of course go back over any areas we might not be happy with, with any of the previous colours. We'll be adding some shade to the camouflage in a moment, but first, let's take a look at an alternative approach. For the urban camouflage, I'm using Dark Reaper, German Grey, and Pale Grey Blue. I'm starting with the Dark Reaper, and this time I'm creating a much more defined pattern of mostly quite small, irregular strokes. I'm applying these in a roughly horizontal manner. Next I'm applying some smaller, darker strokes with the German Grey. I'm happy for some of these to overlap with the previous markings. Finally, I'm applying some even smaller strokes with the pale grey-blue. 
As with the forest camo, these are also serving partly as points of highlight. With the base colours complete, we're ready to add some shade. I'm going to begin with the forest themed squad by shading all of the areas of green camouflage with a 2 to 1 mix of Athonian camo shade and Agrax earth shade. I'm then using some pure Nuln oil for all of the areas of metal. This can also be used for the boots and any areas of dark grey clothing. For the brown belts and accessories, I'm using an equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. I'm then going to thin this with a roughly equal amount of Lamian medium and use this for the paler parts of the outfit. This includes the undershirts, gloves and helmet. For the equivalent sections of the urban troopers, I'm going to thin some Nuln oil with an equal amount of Lamian medium. Notice I'm brushing the shade away from the front section of the helmet to save me having to add a highlight here later on. Once dry, I'm going to add one or two additional layers of this to the back and side of the helmet to strengthen this gradient. Finally, I'm going to add an equal quantity of Drakenhof Nightshade to the thinned Nuln Oil and use this to shade the Urban Camo. Once dry, the Rebel Troopers should already be looking more than good enough to game with. 
especially since we've already highlighted the most important area, the face. So there'd be nothing wrong with finishing the minis here by painting the base and applying a protective matte spray. If you wish to take your troopers that bit further however, join me now for some optional highlights. I'm going to begin by boosting the contrast of the forest camouflage with a few small touches of Elysian green and deck tan. I'm just hitting some of the more prominent raised peaks in the form. We can add some smaller touches with the deck tan. and I'm doing the same for the urban camouflage with some pale grey-blue. For most of the rest of the highlights I'll simply be lightening the base tones with the addition of some ivory, such as you can see me doing here for the tops of the helmets. And for the alternative colour scheme I'm also lightening the base tone, in this case cold grey, with a little ivory. For the green bands on the helmet, I'm creating a frontal highlight, firstly by reapplying some of the German uniform. I'm then going to lighten this with the addition of some ivory in a few stages. Here I'm using a damp brush to blur the edges of the highlight, which is sometimes called feathering. The brighter we take the highlight, the more hard and shiny the appearance will be. I'm also going to use this brightest tone to extend the highlight along the upper rim of the helmet. And I'm going to do the same for the pale coloured bands using the original silver grey. For the pale gloves I'm reapplying some of the original ogre and camo. This too can be lightened with a little ivory. I'm also going to use the ivory to lighten all of the brown accessories, but we'll begin with the reapplication of Steel Legion Drab. and I'm now adding the ivory. You could also use this for the hair if you wish.
This also works over the Rhinox Hide bass tone. Next I'm highlighting the pale plain tops with the original cold grey. And I'm now lightening this once again with some ivory in a couple of stages. For the pale undershirt I'm using the original base colours, which means deck tan for the forest theme. And blue grey pale for the urban theme. I've chosen to push this a little further with some pale grey blue. For all of the metal areas I'm using an equal mix of Stormhost Silver and Deck Tan. A few light touches with the side of the brush tip is all we need here. I'm also using this to create some scratches and battle scars for the helmets. Any areas of German grey can also be lightened with ivory. And this could also be used to create some darker scarring for the pale coloured helmets. I'm pushing the contrast quite far on the goggles. And I'm now going to thin down some Fire Dragon Bright and push this into the left corner of the lens to create a simple gradient. I'm building up the tone in two or three layers. And here I'm neatening up the frame of the goggles with the German grey. With the highlights complete, we're ready to add some finishing touches. I'm now going to add some optional mud effects using Typhus Corrosion. 
This can be applied neat to create a nice rich muddy tone and a slightly rough texture. It can also be thinned to create a more subtle level of staining. Next I'm going to provide some texture for the base and I'm once again using Vallejo's Brown Earth for this. For the models that stand up on their own, you could apply the texture first, then simply place the figure on top and let the basing paste adhere the model to the base. For the rest, it might be safest to glue the mini in place before adding the texture. Once that's dry, I've chosen to shade the bases with some Beale Tan Green. This is to help more closely match them to the terrain that I'll be playing on, and you may well choose a different palette of colours depending on your gaming surface. Once that's dry, I'm using some thinned PVA and Grassy Flock by Jarvis, along with some black and brown grit by Army Painter, to create some texture. First I'm brushing on some PVA, which has been thinned with just a couple of drops of water. We can then sprinkle on the basing products to achieve whatever combination of colours and texture best suits your gaming surface. This can be applied in any order you like. I might also stick down a few small pieces of dried up twig or bark. And I've chosen to paint the rim of the bases in black, although other options may include brown or grey. All that remains now is to protect the miniatures with a matte varnish, and the rebel troopers are ready for battle. Thank you for watching, I hope you have found the video useful. Do please let me know if you have by liking the video and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss future episodes. Please note, you'll find a full list of products used in the video description below, and please feel free to ask me any questions you may have in the comments section and I'll do my best to get back to you. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Legion. Happy painting!